usually about the spirit is a uh, spirit of wisdom and the, the lectionary for this coming Sunday includes that passage from Proverbs 8 about lady wisdom <laughs> being yeah. present at the beginning right, of right. creation uh, and the idea of spirit I think is that somehow uh, and an ineffable beauty begins to emerge when our minds are open to see the transparency of that action, that creative action in life, not only historically, but in, as you said, in the moment, in each interaction, in each encounter. And to be, uh, to be somehow open to that disclosure, uh, gets us a little bit beyond argumentation of dogma or doctrine or theory and really to the concreteness of the human. Uh, some of us grew up in the seminary as personalists, <laughs> <laughs> believing that there is something of God as personal mm -hmm. and able to encounter us in our persons. And that's the mystery we all are sort of touching and yet not being able to really a grasp and encompass. Because it's important for us to be able yes. to relate to God personally, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. that's the only way, well, how else do I do it? I mean, I'm not a, you know, I, I like to say that, you know, I, I get hungry. <laughs> you know, the human condition is, the human, human condition is what it is, right? So we, yeah. we get thirsty, we, you know, we, we experience love, we experience loss, we experience grief. We all have it, and we all have baggage that we carry in too, yeah. right? So some some of that baggage is not profo is profoundly wounding, yeah. you know. And we and we talk out of that as if that's the reality that everyone experiences, right? So it's it's tough to, to draw the the personal is <laughs> our experience, which I suspect we bring to the encounter right. of the holy. And maybe we project it onto the holy. <laughs> uh, maybe we don't know how to really define that which we encounter, but we bring ourselves. I, we, we were talking earlier about a, a dialogue I had with uh, one of our Hindu members of the community, a physician, Dr. Agnishwar, who, when we were talking on encounter, said to me, well, there really is only one God. And I almost fell out of the chair that day because I always thought of Hinduism as this massive number of personas of gods everywhere but in the many he saw the one behind all of the faces a deep reality and through our many faces we we give some kind of content out of our own experience to what is beyond us I think that one of the people that I remember the most uh, that made the greatest impact was Harry Wilkie, Harold Wilkie, who was a um, United Church of Christ minister, and uh, he was born without arms. And uh, he really overcame this challenge. And uh, I was wondering, how are you going to meet this person? You know, how do you relate to this person? And he came in and kind of shocked me because he touched his forehead to my forehead and he says, that's a hug without arms. Oh my. Uh, and he developed the ability to eat, to write with his feet and his legs. Uh, he uh, even learned to drive a car. Oh wow doing this with his legs. And one of the things I remember him saying is, he said, well, you know, everyone has a handicap. Right. He says, you're wearing glasses, or you might have a hearing aid, or there are a million of things that you feel is a handicap, but it depends on how you look at life, how you respond to the challenges of life. And one of the things he did is after the Second World War is work with the uh, veterans coming back. And he says, you have to look with a third eye. And I, I remember that, you know, uh, that you have to look at things with a third eye. But look at some other way, uh, not just with what we see right in front of us, that we might see as a handicap or as an opportunity. 
and uh, I remember reading after that, because that was in the 70s, and that uh, he really worked hard for the Disabilities Act that was mm -hmm. signed by mm -hmm. President Bush, and he was there for that. And I read this story later, uh, that he was given a pen, which he took with his foot, and put in his shoe, and then when they had the dinner later, he was sitting next to Barbara Bush, and he took it out of his shoe and put it in his pocket. Oh my. And everybody clamped. But that shows how, you know, what we would say, how can you do anything without any arms? He says, I got legs. And, and that really has stuck with me all these years. That's a one, one person that I can remember way back then that, that has affected my life even now. And and I, in many ways, I think that in, that encounter helps us see with that third eye. Third eye. And right. I think that's one of the beauties of that, that you all have been able to help, um, help mold for, her, for the Council of Churches. So I want to thank you both for being on Encounter today, Gary and, and Jim, mm -hmm. and, and for this conversation. But more importantly, I want to thank you for the many years of service that you gave to us. And for all of you um, who are watching today, I hope you have a great day and that you, you, you too can begin to see the world through that third eye.